Hi everyone, Harris Dubkamis once again, and today I'm reviewing Ragtime by E.L. Doctor, one of the most widely critically revered and praised American writers of the 20th century. Mr. Doctor passed away quite recently, actually, and before reading Ragtime, the only other book of his I've ever read was The March, which I mainly uh, I was mainly interested in because it almost pulled off the quite difficult trick of winning all four of the major um, American literary awards. The Pulitzer, the Penn Faulkner, the National Book Award and the National Book Critics Circle Award. And The March is an awesome book set in, it's an historical novel set in the Civil War years, amazing, but Ragtime is probably even better. Uh, it's one hell of a ride, it's an impossibly good novel and if you take something away from this video, if you take one thing away from this video, do know that he writes like an absolute motherfucker. Ragtime is a historical novel set in the early years of the 20th century in and around New York City and it's, it's a very fluid narrative and it follows a huge cast of characters which includes people, both uh, very famous historical figures. There's Henry Ford in here, there's JP Morgan, there's Henry Udini, and also fictional characters from all sorts of, from, from all parts of society. There's people from the bourgeoisie in this novel, there's people from the proletariat, there, there's lots of revolutionaries in this book. The book deals extensively and talks in striking detail about the terrible, disgusting living conditions poor people had to live in at that time, but it is not, it is very ironical for sure, but it is not a political book or a book which tries to make some kind of moral point, mostly because of its narrator, which is very peculiar, because uh, let's start from the assumption that it's never quite clear who is talking, who is narrating the events in this book. It's definitely a clear voice, but it's never quite clear whether it's some kind of, you know, omniscient narrator, as in, you know, 19th century novels, all sorts of, you know, Dickens and uh, George Eliot and whatever, or if it is a five-year-old or anyway a very young child that you meet at the beginning of the book which is you know uh, some kind of precocious child that is telling the story of all these different characters for instance several characters are only named in regard to this child's relationship with them so that there's a guy called father and a woman called mother because they are the child's parents but you never learn the real name most notably though remember this is a very precocious child and the way this book analyzes and follows the life of all these different characters and dissects their life in a way that is not really cruel but is almost scientific in a way that you know uh, sheds a light on all of their flaws on all of their disturbances and of all on all the elements of their psychology reminded me a lot of a kid playing with insects and collecting insects for his you know uh, insect collection and looking at them through a magnifying glass. The book and the narrator do not pass judgment on the characters and are only interested in observing them scientifically and at times there are some claims to, you know, a full authenticity in the way some of the events are portrayed, but at the same time, of course, Doctor or the author can play beautifully with this element and you find great irony, for instance, in the way the obsession of the rich of, of rich people of the time are described and analyzed, or for instance, in the way uh, middle class characters who live in the suburbs um, said say that you know the early 20th century was beautiful because at the time there were no Negroes and there were no Italians or Irish or the Jews except that, you know, they soon find out that, no, that's not really the case. Overall, I'm not sure if I'm stressing this enough, but this was an impossibly beautiful literary experience. As I mentioned, the narrative is very fluid, and you follow a character for a few pages, and you learn about his life, and you learn about his fears and his obsessions, and then the camera shifts to another character, and you follow these new ones for a few pages or maybe some chapters, but you never, never lose interest in the plot and in the flow of these events. All of the lives of these characters are interconnected in some way, but you pay attention to all of them in the same way. And this is something that almost never happens with these kind of books. I don't know about you, but with books with, you know, multiple characters that follow them 
maybe for whole chapters, it all, almost always happens to me that there will be one or two characters whose story I don't really give a shit about, and when you get two straight chapters about them, you'll be like, oh, okay, you know, I have to follow these people for a while, that sucks, but that never happens in uh, rec time. All the time I was hooked, all the time I was addicted to this book, it's, also, it's quite short, it's quite dense, it's not impossibly short, but it's quite sure, uh, I, I consumed it in two days, I can't see anyone taking longer than that because it's really addictive. It reminded me a lot of a few other books, most notably it reminded me of John Dos Passos Manhattan Transfer because that book too talks about the uh, er, uh, New York of the early 20th century and it, uh, it uh, talks extensively about the situation of the lower classes of the proletariat and about revolutionaries and it follows life of several characters and shifts between these characters all the time, but it is a much more complicated and difficult text and much less enjoyable. It's not that it's worse as a book, it's, uh, it's they're really quite different books as far as their style is concerned. It's a bit like comparing a good glass of wine uh, with a glass of whiskey. And mind, I don't really drink, so that already gives you the idea that neither of these are really my bread and butter, but whatever. Um, a good glass of wine, if you're an adult, if you're an, you know, an adult with some taste, you probably can enjoy it, you know, I mean, even if you don't know much about wine. But with a glass of whiskey, I can drink wine, even though I'm not a big drinker. But with whiskey, I probably couldn't tell the difference between whiskey and, you know, medicine alcohol. And that's not uh, the whiskey's fault, it's entirely my fault, but it's a different kind of experience. And in this uh, extended metaphor, uh, the whiskey is Manhattan Transfer. Amazing book, I wouldn't really recommend it to anyone. The Ragtime, absolutely, Ragtime is for everybody, it's amazing. In the Skin of a Lion is also another book uh, Ragtime reminded me about. It's a book about a, uh, from a Canadian writer called Michael Ondaatje, and it's also a book about the situation of the lower classic classes in the early half of the 20th century, and about the struggles of the proletariat, and that book too follows several characters, although that one does have a clear main character, and some of these characters are very rich, and some of these characters are very poor, but that one is worse than Ragtime, uh, plainly said. And also, finally, it reminded me a lot of The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by my hero, literary hero, Michael Shaban, um, because both books share a kind of uh, interest in a few elements, most notably in the figure of Henry Udini and in the meaning of his escape feats, and also in novelty items and in the rise of, you know, novelty acts and whoopicushions and, you know, um, uh, turning books that show uh, moving figures in them and all kinds of, you know, ridiculous shit in the uh, first half of the 20th century. If you like Cavalier and Clay, do check out Ragtime and vice versa. Uh, if you feel hardcore, do check out Manhattan Transfer, but probably you don't need me telling you that, you know, John Dos Passos is a famous writer. In any case, do read Ragtime. It's an impossibly enjoyable and rewarding and satisfying and dense and intelligent, intelligent and informative novel. I loved it. Thank you so much for watching. What did you think of Ragtime? What other books by Dr. O besides The March I sh should I check out? Let me know in the comments, guys. Thank you again for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.